had the Grimmer Phase One in 1989. And that Grimmer Phase One, this particular property at that time and since 1896 and 1915 has had two cabins on it. So it wasn't vacant property, it wasn't residential. These are cabins that were being rented out over time. It was originally a school and a civic center. There were other uh, uh, commercial uses on the property, including the equestrian. The equestrian wasn't just on the two acres to the south. It was on this one also. The old hitching post is still there. It was, uh, in my opinion, and my personal history, I've been to that property as a little kid and been on the horse in, and it was the entire three-acre parcel. Um, the, the mistake that I believe that Mr. Martin and Mr. Rolls are making is that they're relying on the 2010 ordinance. This property had vested property rights as of 1985 when the Beer Phase One ordinance was passed. And that right was to be a non-conforming grandfathered use, and under the definition of the 1985 statute, it was a resort. If you had a fishing pond, it was a resort. You did not have to have a lodging facility. If you had an equestrian facility, it was a resort. So in 1985, that, this one acre parcel we're talking about was a resort. And it's been a resort ever since because that's what the law is. It's a vested property right, and the government can't come in and take it away. That's called private property rights. That being said, this uh, 1995 conditional use permit they're talking about, and version 1 versus version 2, and the 1.9 versus 3.1, well, in 1985, Mr. Donato hired me to represent him in accomplishing the purposes of the entire 3.1 acre piece of land. And if you look at the, 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 the site plan, it has two ponds on it. One was on the south parcel, one was on the north parcel. There was only a small pond on the south parcel to start with. He wanted to make it an attractive resort and change the, the look of it, and so he had to have a pond. He wanted to put a pond on the north parcel, the parcel we're talking about. So he hired me and spent a lot of money, I've got my old file right here, to get a water right for that second pond. The old pond had an 1896 water right. And uh, I, I represented for several years and we worked on it. We're still working on that water right. They take a long time. Uh, Mr. Donato was a smart developer. He showed me the 3.1 site plan when I worked on it. That had the two ponds on it. He wasn't the kind of developer that was going to build out the whole property under the 3.1 site plan and ignore the 1.9 site plan just willy-nilly. He spent millions of dollars developing that property. He followed the 3.1 plan. And so did the county for the last 19 years. Um, the, so, if you, if you, in my opinion, it's clear that Mr. Donato followed the 3.1 site plan and so did the county. They issued a total of 16 building permits over the last 19 years on that site plan. No one from two. It doesn't matter, however, if the 3.1 was not the site plan that was approved by the board in 1995, because the, the ordinance that we passed, you passed, uh, in 1989, clearly says that when an owner of property that's adjacent to another property acquires the adjacent property, then he can expand that CUP automatically onto the new property. Um, that's clear in 308, <coughs> section 308 of the Greer Phase 1 ordinance. Could you read um, that for us, please? And the, so it, it's just, it's, it's legally clear that the CUP applies to the entire 3.1 acre <coughs> under either theory. The, um, then, so Mr. Donato relied on the county and the 3.1 site plan, because that's how he built it. He didn't build anything that looks like the 1.9 plan. That plan had a building on top of a well. That couldn't work. That plan didn't have an art gallery. Mr. Uh, Mr. Donato built an art gallery. He relied completely on the 3.1 site plan and built it accordingly. Then along comes my client in 2006. By the way, I didn't get along with him when I was sitting in your seat. Um, but that's neither here nor there. But on this case, he came to me and I says, you have a righteous case and I'm going to take it because I don't do zoning issues. Um, but he comes into Milton and says, Milton, before he buys the property, I want to spend a million and a half dollars buying this property. What can I do with the property? And Milton hands him the Tom Donato CUP along with staple to it, the 3.1 map. And so he spends a million and a half dollars and then continues to build out the CUP, which is, which is interesting because I don't understand why the Greer Coalition would rather have 
14,000 square feet of buildings on 1.9 acres instead of expanding it over 3.1 acres. It makes it better, it makes it less dense, it makes it more open space, and it only has a coverage of about 10 and a half, in, uh, excuse me, 11 and a half or 12 percent building coverage. Okay, time's up. Can I use, Mr. Uh, have I ever used Mr. Sandals also? Yes, you right. Okay. Um, I would just urge the board to understand private property rights, That's all. development, and relax. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Whiting, now that we've heard, okay, um, is there anyone else in the public that's in support of this? You know, we already use your time, sir. That was already, ma'am? I'm in support of it. I don't want to speak. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Okay. We're trying to be fair, you know, to the speakers, you know, so. Now that we heard everyone speak, um, I just want to make sure, you know, we're, we're clear on this and there's no misunderstanding for the record. So, this public hearing is it just to approve, approve this one item, or is there other item, Mr. Whiting? Could you please explain the uh, community development to the to us? Sure. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, it's just the public hearing that was noticed uh, for these parcels for the share, etc. So, if there's no one else on the speaker, we just close the public hearing. I'll proceed. Okay. okay. We don't need a motion for that, right? We need a motion to close it. Just close it. Okay. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close the, uh, the public hearing. <coughs> now, is there a motion with approval of the Greer zone map or <coughs> stated in here? Mr. Shirley. Mr. Shirley. I appreciate all of everybody coming forward, stating their piece, their position relative to uh, the topic on the table. And uh, certainly as a public official, as a leader in the community, in the county and in the state, you try to be right by the people uh, to the best of your ability. And that's what I try to do. I've been in this uh, public service business for going on 44 years now. And certainly there has been a lot of controversy in all that I have to do uh, relative to uh, try to do service to the community, to the people. I think one, one can only do one's best, that's what I do. Talking about property rights here, It takes me back to a time when I served with uh, a real gentleman uh, from down south Apache County here, out there in Lee. I'm not sure how many years I've served with him <coughs> prior to my ascending to the presidency of the Bell Foundation. I served as county, Apache County Supervisor for 18 years. And most of that time I served with this gentleman, the late author in Lee. He was an old gentleman. He and I, we used to visit and we used to talk. And sitting here, uh, running these meetings, talking about the different issues, he, he always said that uh, property rights is almost a sacred thing. If not, if not a sacred thing, it's a sacred thing. Uh, and, um, who, who are we? Who am I to, to try to get in the way of development? of uh, trying to tell somebody what to do regarding their property. If it's their property, they have a right to it. So I'm not going to be in the way, and I don't want this board to be in the way of that private property rights. And uh, I, I've seen him take action, even controversial uh, matters, uh, in the affirmative, going by that philosophy, going by that uh, mandate that he had, that value that he had. 